whenever I'm at shows walking, I see a wire, I get so scared. Like I walk on like my tippy toes around everywhere. I mean, it's a thing. It happens. It, it, you're bound to do it. Yep. Always. But not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I almost felt better for a second there. And then just come right on my parade. Episode 50, something from everyone. We are here. Uh, I'm very happy you're here. So I'm here with Raquel Tavares, RTP photography, the queen of all queens. Uh, episode 50, this is a special one for me. I started the show with the idea of 100 episodes being my milestone. I thought I didn't start recording, so I'm double checking. Um, 50, mm. we're halfway there. So I had to have you in for your fourth time, technically, is right? Because we, well, there was two, and this is the second one in like this show. Then there's the one of like the, the kind of pre episodes that was like 20 minutes long. And then there's the one from your apartment that we don't talk about ever. <laughs> <laughs> the bangs one, the the scene bangs, all the good shit. You you owe me a dollar. I'm gonna put that image up on screen right now because I saw it on my phone the other day, and I no, was like, "I'm Damn. not gonna pay you for that." Um, well, folks, <laughs> someone's gonna pay me for something because that could go in here. <laughs> um, last time you were here was nine months ago. It was episode nine, so it's been a long time. A lot to catch up on. I think the I don't know. Big thing for you is that last night we were shooting Fit for an Autopsy in the Webster. Tonight we were shooting Meshuga in Boston. How much better yeah. does it get? Um, if I could just be there for more than one day. Yes. <laughs> Fair. I was traveling too much. Well, I appreciate you squeezing me in between that. Uh, dive right in here. I wanted to start off, ooh, uh, my last little plug thing is that I am booking music videos for 2024. So if anyone's listening and interested in music videos, hit me up. Let's get something in the books. Uh, I assume you're working on tours for the coming year. Is there anything that you would like to advertise, put out in the universe, anything you want to manifest right here for people to contact you about? I do reels now. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we're getting into video like one second at a time. So we're up to like nine second videos now. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're doing 20 seconds. I just hate it so much. But like it looks sick. Like I know I can do it. I know I can like see it through. It's just so time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, uh, Lucas was here last week and we were chatting about, uh, he started like writing songs and how like some songs feel tedious to him. And I realized that like photo to me started to feel tedious and that's why our video became more fun to me is like mm -hmm. photo felt so tedious to do like a hundred separate projects and for me it's so much more exciting to just do like one like big thing but it sounds like you're the opposite I feel like you like doing like the hundred little projects more than like the yeah. one big thing I don't think I've ever been on tour and worked for just one band mm -hmm. which is so opposite to me like well, I would rather invest all of me into one thing I mean like I've worked for one band on tour but I've also tried to take like you know what I mean like yeah. get hired elsewhere too, like make extra money, locals, whatever. That's always the goal. I think that's the the key to touring is finding other ways to make money for as a content creator. Like we we either end up doing merch on the side, we end up driving, and like if you don't want to do merch or drive, you got to find some other way to make money at the shows. And yeah, yeah. locals is to work in more than one band. It's getting getting your money where you can get it. Um, I want to go back to where this thing starts for you. So my it's always fun to like try and think of questions for you because I don't really I feel like I already know so much about you that it's tough to like sit here and be like, so Raquel. Um I don't know anything about where this thing like starts for you, like what your first band is. Where do you like first fall in love with like this weird music? Like, I feel like uh, I don't know your family that well, but I don't feel like they're all metalheads. I feel like they're listening to much more normal music and somehow you wander no, into this world. My mom likes Bless the Fall and a Day to Remember. Hell yeah. But that's like as far as she goes. That's even like later though. Like when when you're five, those don't exist. Like what is no? What's so when you're five? I grew up with R and B. Like everything oh. was R and B and hip hop. Like Ludacris "Get Back" for me was a big moment. That's the one. Yeah, I remember that music video. How are you listening to these? Like, did oh you no, it was stand up. I don't know. Sorry, yeah. Did you have like? Was your family giving you CDs? Were you like listening with no, older siblings? Where in are you getting the this car? From? I don't know why, but I feel like I've spent so much of my life in a in a car. <laughs> like those are where all of my yep. like memories are from. Is just <laughs> listening to music and like, maybe I block everything else out. I don't know. Only <laughs> <laughs> the, the transit from place to place. What you remember? If it doesn't the have a places, no theme worries. song, I'm not listening to it. I guess. Do you have like a specific memory of? Uh, my first band is Good Charlotte, and I have like a vivid memory. Of getting a CD that someone burned for me. It was like I was going to daycare and it was like the person's like older brother or something who's like eight years older than me burns a CD of Young and the Hopeless by Good Charlotte. And that album mm -hmm. just like became my whole life. And I have vivid memories of like being in the backseat of the car and like making my mom just like push back and just repeat the anthem over and over and over. And like she must have hated it. It must have been the worst thing ever. But I have such clear memories of sitting there listening to Good Charlotte as at a five or six year old. I have no idea how old I would have been, even younger maybe. Uh, do you have any memory, like a yeah, vivid memory of listening to one of your boys in the backseat? So 
My sister had Lemon Meringue Tie by Dance Gavin Dance as her ringtone. Wow, okay. And Alarm. Um, I We weren't incredibly close, so it's not like I was listening to her music ever. To me, it was obnoxious. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just heard it every single day for probably like seven, eight months. And I was like, you know, I can... I can get down with that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. So is Dance Gavin Dance the first band that like, you attach to? Like, what is the first band that you're like, oh, this is my shit. This is the one for me. Um, mm, of Mice and Men back then. Like, I forgot about the tattoo. <laughs> the classic of Mice and Men tattoo. Okay. So that's the one. Well, do you know like what record you get in on? Uh, I think it was Westbound and Down. Okay, that's early. Yeah. That's yeah. like the second in Sebring is the one like after that, whatever that album's called. Or maybe, I don't know. That could just be a song off the album. I I haven't spun it back in a long time. <laughs> um Yeah, but it was of mice and men for me. Like I went crazy for them and I vivid I have videos on my phone. Like I have I was there, like I will not delete them from okay. like the Palladium, and I it's got Austin doing the this is faithfulness <laughs> at its finest, and then it has a like tsh- <laughs> like and everybody's just screaming and it sounds insane. I'm gonna send it to That's you. That's the peak of my so life. So you Please can like it. put yes. it. Yeah. Yes, I will remember this when I'm. I'll forget it and then I'll be watching this back tomorrow, editing this. Once my drum set. I forgot to mention my fucking drum set came in. I've been talking about this thing for so long. Stop. And well, not just today, but like on this on this podcast, I'm always sitting down here saying I should learn how to do drums. It sounds hard, and it finally came in today, like 30 minutes ago. And now I'm just here staring at the fucking kit behind you, waiting to go play with that. So. We better we better make this hour go quick so I can get to my drum set <laughs> fast as fuck. Also, random. I don't support Austin Carlisle. Just, just putting Fair. that out there. Everyone's <laughs> aged. Yeah, yeah. 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 Life goes on. I think we can all. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a weird thing for me as like as I get older is looking back at some of the band members and being like, oh, I loved you, and now I don't love you anymore. Yeah. You're not. Is that like? Uh, I feel like I like tainted the industry for myself by like getting involved with it. And there's some part of me that wishes I could go back to being five and listen to Good Charlotte and just like not giving a fuck at all. And like, yeah, I think Good Charlotte's age well. I don't think I've heard anything too controversial about them, so I don't know if they're the best example here. But like, certainly, yeah, I, I probably would do better off to leave names out of my mouth here. But like, certainly, there's bands I grew up on where it's like, fuck, that's not someone I wish I gave my money to or took my mom's twenty dollars to give yep. and buy a T-shirt from them. Uh, has this like tainted like your ability? Like, yeah, is there a party that wants to just go back and listen to Dance Gavin Dance and like not give a fuck about it, or are you happy? Yeah, are you happier being more involved in the industry? Um, I I like the knowledge aspect of it. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like especially being someone who tours, yep. it's important to kind of have an idea of what you're gonna be getting yourself involved with and. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, don't ever put me in a situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's so tough. And it's so like you can't. It's like uh, you can't put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste. Like whatever mm-hmm. the fuck that saying is. Like once you learn about these things, like once you, uh, yeah, once you learn about some of the scumbags that go on behind the scenes, and you learn that like uh, they're in every world and every industry. Like no matter what yeah. job you have, you're gonna have a shitty coworker, and it just that hap- so happens that in ours, because there's no HR department, that sometimes these yeah. shitty people can go very far, and sometimes they end up powerful enough where it's like they're objectively wrong and no one wants to tell them that because it's only going to hurt my pocket if I tell them they're wrong. Yeah. And it's this weird thing of like, yeah, I don't want to be ignorant to the industry I'm working in or the people I'm working with, but also like there's some bliss and ignorance that I wish I could tap into sometimes and like go watch uh, my favorite band. We were just talking about a band uh, right before we got here, a band. Um, I'm trying to think about how to say this without saying someone's name and how to tell you what I'm saying. But we are just talking about a band that I love. Uh, and they're one that didn't age well. We were talking about a vocalist that left the band. Um, and yeah, the rest of the band has gone on to do great things, but certainly seem to be controversial people <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. And I don't know. I wish there was a part of me that I could just like go back to that 2015 version of me and just listen to that record and listen to that band and just be happy. And yeah. Not think and not appreciate how human all these people are. Yeah. But like. Like, I get it. I do. Because sometimes I like, oh, I wish I could go to a show and no one has any idea. I do photography. Yep. Yeah. And they don't talk to me about it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I don't feel pressure to be like, ah, oh, I wish I was here shooting, you yep. know? Yeah. That the I think certain things, once you involve with them, it kind of like changes your outlook of a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's tough. And I think the, the flip side there is that also makes shows more magical. Like once you appreciate that everyone's human and like 
you know that someone on stage is having a bad day, like mathematically. I don't, I don't know every person at every show I go see, but like if you go see five bands, like for sure one of them, someone on that package got broken <laughs> up with earlier this week, or like is having trouble at home, or like whatever the hell could be happening in the universe. And like there is something magical about like sitting there and be like appreciating that like they're flawed and still putting on this magical performance. And like I try to lean into that, but I feel like I get caught in a lot more of like. I think you were just screaming at someone behind the stage, and I don't <laughs> think you were being very kind about how you got this thing handled, how your, your fucking parking spot wasn't the, where you thought it was going to be, and now you're fucking pissed off that your bus has to be 10 feet further away from the door. Oh, man. That was a big thing. That's what? a huge thing on where tour. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like there are so many venues that don't have, like, basic band needs, yep. and it stresses me out, and I feel bad seeing – bands being on the timeline like we didn't even get a case of water and it's like <laughs> what is happening it's crazy yeah i, I always talk about that, that like there's no barrier to entry for most of our industry and that's like all you have to do is buy a camera all you have to do is book one show and you're a promoter like all you have to do is buy a guitar and you're in a band like there's there's no not that i think we should make all the bands go through college but like that's that's why college is important for making a doctor right is it like gets out all the people who absolutely should not be doctors <laughs> and so by the time you survive those eight years it's like okay we can now trust you with a scalpel to cut people open and in our world it's like yeah you're just set free when you decide to be yeah uh. i don't know i don't quite know like what to what to make of it and yeah it's like i don't we can't go back to being 12 years old and like not knowing all the shit we know but I wish there was some way to like, I don't know. I guess it's also why I enjoy rap. It's like, it's a world I don't know. And yeah. I'm sure they are far more flawed. Than some no, of the I, I, I understand to, that. But like, at least it's a different flavor of like personal troubles that I'm aware of. That's how I feel about country, but I'm not ready to go there. You listen to country? No, I don't listen to country. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I would be, that's one genre where I could be completely blissfully blind in. Cause I, I couldn't tell you, Anything. <laughs> Keaton Cleet could be the biggest person <laughs> in country, and I, I don't know. I don't know anything about all, it. All I know about country is that Lil Durk has songs with Morgan Wallen, who's also a flawed individual, I think. But I couldn't tell you. I don't even know who that is. Well, I see people post, but like, yeah. Do you do you listen to mostly rap? Right? Is that your, your like bread and butter? Did you? Uh, I assume you grew up listening to mostly metal. Does the rap come in because of like the the tainted metal industry, or is it has it always kind of been a duality there? Um, it's for me, it's always been a duality uh, because I just feel like one part of my household was listening to metal, yep, and then one part of my household was listening to R and B, and then one was listening to rap. But I will say, um, I just so like. I, for metal, for me, I, the bands that I choose to listen to are ones where I feel like I resonate with sure. the lyrics on a personal level. Um, and some artists that rap, I'm just like, yeah, like this is just bars after bars. <laughs> I feel you. I, I'm glad you said that, actually, because I realized for me, lyrics are music. Like, it's it, it's so weird to me to like, yeah, I feel like I hear the lyrics first and everything else is like in support of the lyrics. And when I'm talking with like, yeah, all of the, our instrumental friends were so talented. It's, like, almost offensive to tell them that, like, yeah, I hear you as a backing track to your vocalist. Like, I almost don't <laughs> hear you, which isn't quite true, obviously. But, like, yeah, there is something there. And I guess in rap, it's so much easier to just get lost in the lyrics and not. Uh, how do you then, like, I know you listen to, like, you're wearing, I, are you not? Uh, <laughs> you were earlier wearing Fit for an Autopsy stuff. And it's, like, those lyrics, I'm sure, aren't kind. Like, those aren't lyrics you probably <laughs> resonate with. <laughs> like, how do, you, I, how do you balance that? I mean, honestly... Fit for an autopsy would be something for the gym and, like, running and energetic. Yeah. But, like... Or sitting in traffic. <laughs> well, okay, so it it really just, I guess, depends on the band. So I... Reflections is super heavy, mm -hmm. right? But I'm, like, the lyrics, like, Dude, perfect. I can't... I, I love that Color Clear album. Uh, yeah, we've talked about this yeah. before. But I love it more than anything, and it makes me so sad that I can't listen to it anymore. Like, it just... It what? hits such a chord in me like somehow those lyrics i don't know what it is like somehow whatever they're saying hits me in such a way where like that album will not fail to put me in a bad mood for like a week like it's just no it's just it's so raw i it is that's why it's to me I, seeing it live yeah. was well i didn't see the whole album but when i went to that show in minnesota that was like i was like i almost died on the plane here and i'll do it again yeah like oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm laughing at the show. There was a, a plus one there that surprised you that always is making me laugh. And I know better than to dive into that here. But man, is that a good story that makes you laugh all the time. <laughs> is there reflections going on tour again this year? Aren't they? Um, back they're on the doing road? a tour with Left to Suffer, Veil vale of Maya. Yes. Um, and there's two other bands. That's I, okay. I can't remember, or I don't know how to pronounce. It. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many tours. I can read so their logo on the flyer. To, well, it, it, it's not even that. I think it was definitely legible, but I, it's just there's so many. I, I'm I look at it and I'm like, who do I know? Yep. And um, can I take pictures? And that's what I go off of. Like, it's, yep. <laughs> it's the same. It used, it's always that now. And it used to just be like, what show do I want to go to? And now it's like, have I seen them recently? Right. Uh, who else is going to be there? Do I think there's going to be 10 other cameras there? Should I go to the show? There's only going to be one camera at? Like, yeah, it's so such a weird thing to pick shows now as opposed to when you were a kid. And it's just like, yeah, let's go see the one show at the Palladium this weekend. And now it's like you have the luxury of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I just feel like I get a little, I feel like a prima donna about it, but I don't yep. want to be getting beat up at shows anymore. Uh, yeah. I don't. Yep. I really don't. Because it's not even, like, I understand the whole mosh culture thing. Sure. Not even going to get into it because, like, I get it. Sounds yeah. like you're about to get into it. <laughs> no, no. But, like, if I'm doing a job, right, why are you beating me up? Uh, yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not like I've ever tried to intentionally be in the way, but I've I've taken my fair share of blows, and I just can't. I uh, like. I was just at a show last night. Uh, <laughs> shout out Shape Thrower, you guys ripped last night. Uh, I was just at that show, and I was talking with one of their homies, whose name I'm forgetting, but he was rad as hell, and he only he was like me. His knee was fucked up, so we were connecting about our fucked up knees. Uh, and I'm only saying that so if he knows, whatever. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> I was remembering a story where I was shooting at Point Beach back in the day, and I was standing on a merch table that was a folding table, and of course, I'm like looking through my camera, and then someone like moshes into the table, and the whole thing collapses, but because I'm like looking through the viewfinder, I'm so ignorant. I have like a 50 millimeter lens on, right? So I have no sense of what's immediately in front of me. All I know is what's 20 feet away from me, and all of a sudden, I'm just like falling, and there's people everywhere around, and it's this whole like fake pile, and it's just this like nightmare do you have a story of like getting stuck in a pit getting hit by accident like i'm uh, i'm i'm thinking of all the times we've had like the co2 go off in our face like oh what's one God. that stands out to you is like the yeah the not the worst you've ever been hit but a time you got caught in the pit or fell off a table some shit like that i have a falling story and a caught story we got time what for both you, okay let's start with <laughs> let's start with the caught because i no let's start with the fall Let's start with the fall. Fall okay. sounds fun. Yeah. So. The fall of Raquel. <laughs> Shout out. That's my new band. I was working for doing behind the scenes for Ice Nine. Yep. And they had these giant, like, I was doing behind the scenes of the It Is The End part. And, like, they were playing this stage and it was shaped like it had, like, a catwalk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, Spencer was in the middle. This is for a music video or a show? Yeah. It is a music it video. It was okay. the one where he was, like, a, in a clown costume. Hell yeah, okay. And they had these giant, like, lights that had sandbags on the bottom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is already going downhill. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> and I don't know why, but, like, the legs were just, like, really big, like, I guess because of how large the lights were. Um, and I, I just, like, I just... I fell so hard. Like, I'm sure all you could see was just, like, my hair, like, <laughs> just moving. And I, it, I like, slapped the ground. And, nice. like, I had my camera and everything in my hand. Uh, it nice. was so bad. And I got up, and I was like, was I in the shot? And they were like, no, don't worry. It was during it. a shot. That's they were filming. Like, they were filming the music video when that happened. And I, like, was, like, trying to, you know, skedaddle across <laughs> It was bad. Damn, I was I was low key hoping it was like between takes, so it was like that dead air, and then it's just a silent warehouse, and all you hear is Raquel slap down on the floor. No. Okay, so that's when you fell. When did you get caught? What's the caught story? I was at um, the old Alchemy. Okay. In Rhode Island, um, boundaries was I think headlining. It was like a like a smaller. I don't know what they were doing there. To be honest, <laughs> I was there. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, they were playing, but, like, uh, it was, like, two or three days before I was leaving for tour with victims, 
to do the veil tour. I was there shooting. I just got my Godox flash, and I was like, yeah, pop, pop. <laughs> you know, having a great time. Somebody, like, flew. I don't know where they came from. It was like a body dropping from the sky. <laughs> like, just completely fell on top of my camera. And, like, the Godox flash just ripped right off the mount. Hell yeah. And I'm just standing there, like, between two people, and, like, this kid's leg is on my shoulder. And I'm, like, I'm just there. And he's, everybody around me is, like, bent backwards, like, leaning, falling, and it's... Yeah, so I had to I had to expedite ship a new <laughs> flash to me. That's a nightmare. That night it was really expensive. Uh, shipping stuff, I, yeah. I thought you were gonna say you had to ship it to the road, but yeah, you got, thankfully you guys get it done before you had to go on the road and actually like leave home. But still counts. Uh, the other one that comes to my mind is we're telling all these shitty show stories. It's my first day of tour. I'm sure I've told you this at some point, but it's been a while. Uh, my first day on tour, I'm in Louisiana. And so we'd been in the studio for like a week or two. Shout out Hollow City. Shout out Zach. Shout out Jimmy. Shout out the gang down there. Um, <laughs> we're on tour, and I'm on tour with Call It Home at the time. And so Call It Home is playing. And it's just like, it was a big venue that we should not have been in. It was like one of those shows <laughs> where it's like the, the venue could have held 500 people, and there was 100 people there. So it was already just like a weird energy in this place of like, yeah, someone just booked the wrong room for this show. Like they overestimated how many people were going to come out to this shit. And so we're down there and um, yeah, we've been in the studio for like a week or two. So like, thank goodness I was like comfortable with them to some degree and comfortable with hollow city who was headlining the show. Uh, so like that made it a little bit less bad than it would have been otherwise, but call it home playing. And it's like their last song. And I decided I'm going to walk out and like get the classic shot behind the drummer. Uh, I was looking at your Instagram and you always have like the best shot from behind the drummer, the enterprise earth one that blew up everywhere. Um, fucking toss that in this episode as Thank well. You. But, um, I was going to try and copy you <laughs> <laughs> and I kicked like a, a surge protector that was plugged into the wall and the whole room goes dark and silent. And it was one of those things where it's like, right as it happened, my brain immediately was like, couldn't have been me. Couldn't have been me. So like, I look up from behind the drum kit to like, see like what's, what's good. And it's just this half empty room of people and all the bands. So it's like I could see every like I knew everyone in the room. And I'm just looking at like 50 people that I all know, all staring at me, being like, "What the fuck did you just do?" <laughs> and so then I look down and I see the surge protector, like obviously not plugged into the wall. And it very quickly is like, "Oh, that's that's the problem." So I plugged it back in, hoping that somehow like that was gonna fix it. Like I was gonna plug it back in, they're gonna keep playing, and life was gonna go on. No, no, they had to end their set. That was like the last song, like halfway through the last song. So did they have a Kemper? I don't think so. It didn't end up. It was, there was no like gear issues. It was more just like the embarrassment and like oh. yeah, having your song. Like it was their last song, so I don't remember what song it was, but I assume it was like the song, right? Like oh, every okay. every local band ends on the one song that everyone else knows. So my assumption was that yeah, it was the one time in the show where they were ready to like peak and do their their big moment, <laughs> and then your boy goes back there and fucks it all up. But to my in my defense, and this is for sure just me coping and justifying the past to myself, but I swear that, like, the surge protector, one, crazy to run a whole, like, the whole thing off one surge protector. Like, yeah, no, fucking that's... plug shit in different places, number one. Number two, like, this thing was, like, hanging out of the wall. Like, it's the most Louisiana thing to, like, use this outlet and this surge protector to power a show. Like, neither one of those things is qualified to, like, power a guitar, much less, like, the whole fucking venue. And it always stuck out to me. And now, like, whenever I'm at shows walking, I see a wire. I get so scared. Like, I walk on, like, my tippy toes around everywhere. I mean, it's a thing. It happens. It, it You're bound to do it. Yep. Always. But not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I almost felt better for a second there. And then just come right on my parade. I actually, uh, I just had another one of those that I didn't tell you about recently. Uh, last weekend, I was shooting an event. Uh, it was at a college. And it was one of the Impractical Jokers. Joe Gatto, mm -hmm. one of the Impractical Jokers, was doing comedy. Uh, <laughs> and right at, the, like, right at the show starting, I get tapped that like the photographer didn't show up. And I was supposed to be doing video. And they're like, can you just do both? And I was like, sure, I'll figure it out. Um, with video, we couldn't use like his, like his audio, obviously, right? So I was just really just like looking for people in the crowd. Like I hadn't really planned to be around the stage. And then when I have to do photo, it's like, oh, fuck, now I need to figure out how to, like, get to the stage. But, like, it's a comedy show. Like, there's not a photo pit. Like, you're not supposed to be in the right. front row of people. So I'm trying my best to, like, sneak around the stage and, like, get all the angles or whatever. And I realized, like, I want the classic shot from, like, the stage at, like, I don't know, five feet between, like, the stage and, like, the, like, back curtain or whatever. 
Uh, so I figured I could like walk between there, get a nice little fish eye of like the whole thing, get the lights, the comic, yeah, get the whole sense of the arena. And like right as I'm walking behind him, he like pauses for a joke and like turns to get a drink of water and turns and just stares at me. And it's one of those like I'm sneaking and like it was one of those like I knew I was taking a risk, but it's like I need the shot. Like I <laughs> this is what I'm here to do. And he looks at me and he just like, who are you? Like into the microphone in the arena. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this isn't this isn't ideal. Right. Like get tapped at the last moment is like, a, hey, can you help us? And I'm like, yeah, I could help you. And then five minutes later, the fucking headline act is like, yo, who is this guy? What is he? Why is he here? He pulled a Travis Scott. Uh, Yep. And so <laughs> speaking of people who have found great success. Um, so then he, he like starts like talking to me and I like I can't figure out if he's like fucking with me or if he's genuinely like fuck off. <laughs> and so thankfully, as it kept going, I was like I listened to enough comedy that I was like, I think he's just like fucking me. I think like once he acknowledges me, he kind of has to roast me like he can't just like let me yeah, walk. I, I can't get off easy. And so then I'm just getting roasted in front of an arena of fucking people. <laughs> I get my photo. And then the whole night, everywhere I went in the arena, they were like, don't fuck up the show again. And security kept being like, you better be careful next time. And it's like, yo, I, I have clearance. <laughs> I can go anywhere. And everyone in the arena is like, did he know you're going to be back there? Like asking about like a plant or some shit, like all the fans or whatever. Oh like, my God. I became the star of the show by accident. And it was a nightmare. It was like, the yeah, it was similar to turning the whole power off of like, fuck i really should make sure that never happens again that you is had your moment unfortunately i did uh and then i'm taking photos of, like afterwards they're doing big group photos and it was uh him with like a bunch of students and then it was him with like all the cops on campus <laughs> and i was just sitting there like please don't roast me in front of the police officers please don't roast me <laughs> in front of the police officers and i got off easy i don't think he remember i don't know if he remembered who i was or if he did he just didn't acknowledge me which is fire shout out joe you're the bland man <laughs> Obviously, he watches all my episodes. All the Impractical Jokers are my number one fans. <laughs> um, you never know. You really don't. That's the weird part that I am still not quite comfortable with. Like, I truly don't know who's listening to this. And sometimes people will, yeah, come be like, oh, I checked it out. And I'm always like, the fuck? As if, like, as if it's wrong for people to listen to the thing that I'm putting out to be listened to. Like, <laughs> I feel like I've done a good job of internalizing. Like, I'm just going to hang out in my basement. I'm going to talk to my friend. And that's that. That's all I'm going to do. And whatever happens after that is not my problem. And sometimes it becomes my problem. I don't think it's a problem to be recognized. <laughs> have you ever been, like, caught at a show like that? Has there been a time where a band, like, did, have you ever, like, shut down a show the way I have? Have you ever had a band member, like, call you out from the stage? Or, like, uh, can, you, can you make me feel a little bit less embarrassed <laughs> about the two stories I just shared? So I feel like if I talk about it, I'm going to, like, kind of, like, set myself up because I always just play it off, like... <laughs> <laughs> well you're caught bitch <laughs> what's up what happened there have been a couple of times working for various bands where i've accidentally stepped on things i'm way more aware like what is one thing you stepped on what do you like you like a pedal i board turned like, off a kemper before by accident that's how did you manage to turn off a kemper stepping on things like the same thing I was doing, where you were trying to sneak around. It was around. a power strip, and I those power strips. I stepped, I stepped, I stepped on the uh, the orange light, yep. the forbidden orange light by accident, <laughs> and then I just was like, like, <laughs> just carry on. I don't know. I can't tell that that's not coming out of the amp. Like, I, who did that? Like, <laughs> that was exactly what I did. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> did you have to accept that it was you like they no was, no one noticed like someone I mean, must have noticed maybe <laughs> delusion is free <laughs> like. that's my chest tattoo <laughs> delusion is free right across here we're like all the cool guy tattoos um stepped on a kemper that's like an expensive oopsie too i mean like, i didn't step on it i turned it off but it takes forever to turn back on that's the problem so yes. It was sounding a little crazy. <laughs> Did you hear it from the band afterwards? I assume like if if you stepped on it, you were probably no. No one said anything to you. That's impossible. It's not. That's literally like if you turned it, off my camera in the middle of the music video. If you're not there, yeah. After, who's who's gonna talk to you? <laughs> I guess so. I guess that works. <laughs> just run away. And it's not to say that I just go around turning people's things off and like no, pretending it it's not yeah. me, but like 
I mean, there have genuinely been times where I've been back there and mm -hmm. like stuff has happened and I'm in a I'm in a compromising position and it genuinely wasn't me. <laughs> to the best of your knowledge, <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> no, like I I have started to pay so much attention. Mm -hmm. I'm creasing my sneakers for this. Like I'm fully I'm committed. I'm creasing my sneakers for <laughs> this is so extra. Sometimes you just have to like power, you know, like yeah. The the way that the things are set up, you have to like tiptoe between mm -hmm. chunks of wires, and it's mm -hmm. uh, that was our entire tour. Yep, and that's always like the the forbidden fruit part of my brain of like I feel like the uh, the photo pit is where everyone else takes photos. So my yeah. first thought is like, how do I take a photo not from here? Where do I go that like other people aren't going to go? How do I find something unique and interesting here? And that always gets me into trouble. It's exactly what you're saying of like, if I had just stayed in the photo pit, there's no issues here. But it's us going, how do I find something better? How do I make this more interesting? How do I get behind the cab? How do I get the crowd in this? How do I, yeah, add more depth to this frame? And we get into trouble by overachieving or trying no, too hard. You got to risk it always. And I, the thing is, is I feel like if I was, maybe if, if I was risking it and it wasn't worth it, the bands would be like, yo, like. Yeah. Like, seriously, you don't need to be up here. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. But I I didn't get a complaint. It's a very strange thing to be welcomed in. It's like the, the fifth, sixth member, whatever the number is, of the band. And where it's like, yeah, I literally have no ability to contribute to anything you're doing. But we do. It's this weird, like, duality to me of, like, I'm the least important person at the show in the context of, like, if the sound guy can't make it, the band's fucked. If the lights yeah. guy can't make it, they're fucked. If the drummer can't make it, they're fucked. If I can't make it, nothing happens. But if I can't make it, then they're going to have more trouble selling tickets in the next city or the next place. And it's this weird thing that I'm always trying to balance of like, I'm literally not shit. And I'm also like the head of their marketing department in this moment. And it's this like weird like pressure of like, yeah, I don't matter at all. But also like, I really could have an impact here if I do my job well. I completely agree. I feel like I've gotten really lucky um, with the bands that I've worked for that they've made me feel like yeah. like a very family aspect, like we got you, like you're one of the team. But I'm not going to lie, I spend a lot of time on tour like l listening to conversations and having zero input. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, the reverb in there was crazy, yeah. guy. Like... <laughs> Sure. I, you know, I, I quickly learned I've always like used to try and give input in those situations. And I always would make myself sound like an idiot. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't but know how you to play guitar. Like, no, you, no, 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 no. I've seen you play guitar. No. Like, I, I have pictures of it. It's like insulting <laughs> to people who can play guitar to say that I could play guitar. It's okay, like, but I'm just saying like you have like, yeah, I can gravity blast super crazy good. But like. Yo, so. <laughs> <laughs> a week or two ago, I'm on FaceTime with Raquel, and she tells she bragged about how she can gravity blast, and then she fucking pulls up, I don't know, a drumstick, a remote, a pencil, I don't know what you use. It's a drum hand. pad. A drum pad. But what, what were you hitting it with? I had sticks, but okay. the problem is, is like they came in like with the drum pad. Okay, so now Raquel's lying, but that's what, happened, not true. what happened for real is that we're on FaceTime, and she goes, I can gravity blast, and then goes... <laughs> that is not true. And so... <laughs> Now, that's actually, to be fair, that's exactly like, that's a great comparison here. That's as well as I can play guitar. <laughs> you said no, you can gravity blast no, the same as me I, saying I can I play guitar. Need, no, there's, there's actual <laughs> video proof of me doing it, and I did do it. You just don't want to admit it. It's okay. But you said earlier in the clip when I did, so. Uh, you attempted. No, don't attempt. cut that out. Keep it there <laughs> because it's going to be my, like, my car facts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, man, I have to watch my mouth. I almost let something <laughs> slip there that I shouldn't have let slip. Uh, I said that there was a word in one of the last episodes that I let slip, and I've been looking back. It's like, fuck, I really wish I didn't let that one fly, but it was funny, and I'll stand by the joke. Um, but, yeah, it is a weird thing to try and come to terms with there. Um, we were talking before about, though, like how, how being comfortable in a band is such a big thing, and it is a strange thing to me of, like, yeah, I'm only as good as I am comfortable. And mm -hmm. when you're with a band that you're, like, trying to impress, when you're in that venue that you're trying to, yeah, when you're trying to make something good, nothing good happens. And it's this, it's always shocking to me how how much better uh, how much better a band can get out of me if they just make me feel good, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it probably goes the same way, right? When I'm filming a music video, uh, one of the biggest things I'm thinking about is, yeah, are they comfortable? Like, how do I make their day as easy as possible so that they can succeed as much as possible? And it's always this weird, like, gray area, right? Like, you would think, I have all the faith in you, a photographer, and it would never dawn on me to think of the how you feel about the person you're taking pictures of affects the photo that you're taking. But it is a really important piece here. 
I feel like how, your connection with the band gives you good stage chemistry. Yeah. Because like when you're on point and the band's on point and like you guys are just vibing, you're like making yeah. jokes, it's a good time. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Hard to go right though sometimes. I think and there's a lot of like creative I don't know. We all are we all are hard headed, right? I think you get into this world because we're stubborn in some capacity, and we think we can do better, right? I think uh, I think part of why I ended up getting into cameras originally is because I have all these posters on my wall as a kid, and somewhere in my brain I go, "Oh, I could do that. That's not even that hard." And of course, it is. I don't think I've taken a single photo that would be in these alt press magazine <laughs> posters that were on my wall back in the day. But like, yeah, there is that like ego that's so important to all of us that we also have to learn to to swallow and be a part of the team sometimes. Oh yeah, no, I I get. Very much like as much as I feel like I'm a good photographer, every time I take photos, I'll sit there and anyone who's around me, I'll be like, does this look good? Like <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, no, it's great. And I'm like, gaslighter. <laughs> it's How fine. How do you cope with that? Especially like on tour when you're shooting every night, like I, anytime you're doing anything that often, like you're going to have an off day and they're an off week in there, like. When you're when you're on a tour, you're on a four-week tour, and in the middle of week two, your brain is telling you, like, yeah, I think you suck at this. And it's like the evidence is that you don't suck at this, but when our brain tells us that, sometimes it's hard to hard to ignore it. Like, what are you doing on those moments to like, yeah, remind yourself that you are a boss ass bitch and that you are good at what you do? So I'll when I feel like I, I'm stagnant and I'm not enjoying what I'm getting, um, I have, I don't know, like probably five billion presets, right? Yeah. But I have Shout I got out Red God. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a system now where everything I've made within like the past year or so starts with the letter A because I'm too lazy to like scroll that's all the way crazy. down. That's <laughs> so like literally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like it makes sense. That's how you should organize files, but like that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I like will take all the presets that I had used within the last couple of weeks and like put like take the a out and let them be you know wherever they go okay and then i try to shoot in different angles that i wouldn't <laughs> normally shoot in yep. and then eventually it either works and makes me feel great or i'm like okay this is actually worse like you were doing so much better mm -hmm. um but i also have like a a really good dynamic with the bands that i work with where um if they feel like I'm getting too much of something or too little of something or I'm missing something, we have a good relationship where it's like, I'm here to provide you what you want. So yeah. I, they feel comfortable coming to me and being like, hey, like on this song, do you think you could get a picture from like this area? And that works out really great. And I feel like being open to criticism from the band, like they know when they're going to be hype. They know mm -hmm. what part they're going to do. And I... I I feel like I get to that point, but it's not going to happen on the first week. Yep. So getting... And there's also a weird thing. Like, it's our art, but it's their image. Yeah. And it's always this weird balance. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and they did a music video with someone, and they asked for revisions, and the person was like, no, this is the final product. And it, it was this weird thing to me of, like, you're misunderstanding the whole thing that we're yeah. doing here. Like, I'm not making a music video, and Peter's not the first name on this. Like, it's not the name that anyone's going to watch it because of, right? Like, everyone's going to watch it because of the artist's name. And if they enjoy it enough that they remember my name as a result of it, great. But like you're you're delusional if you think that like this is about you, if this is about making the thing for you. Uh, are you good at taking revisions? Like I sometimes I feel like I am stubborn and I think I've gotten a lot better at accepting it and accepting that like I don't always know everything, right? Like sometimes I uh, there's a music that I talked about here uh, with Chain Twist a while ago, uh, and I sent a first draft and I loved it and I still kind of stand by it, but it's also like. It was over the top. It was crazy. Like they asked for like, I don't know exactly what the dilemma was, but they asked for like one effect and I just took it to the next level. And I was like, this is the better way to do it. And then when they got it, they were like, uh, no, like mm -hmm. it needs to be a more modest, like it, this is overpowering. It doesn't fit the thing. Okay. And it was one of those to me of like, ah, I like draft one, but I get that it's not my draft one that we're making it right. So I'm making the best thing for chain twist. And as a result, yeah, let's make that happen. And to be fair, I feel almost bad sharing that because it's like I don't want to share too much inside baseball, but I talked about it with them on the podcast, so it feels all like public yeah. record uh, as I spit everywhere. Sorry. Because um, okay. <laughs> you just like slowly back up more and more. <laughs> um, but yeah, are you good at like taking feedback revisions? Like is that something you struggled with in the past? Are you better at it now? Like what's that, what's that process like for you? I will say in the past um, I did struggle with revision. I feel like 
also at that time I was shooting like local bands and venues that had one yeah. light bulb yep. <laughs> and like I would do that. And then the next day I would shoot August burns red and like the local bands, I, I definitely made a mm. post about it. Like if I have an idea and it came to my mind and something happened, I want an opinion. I want to hear about it. But like you can't expect August burns red quality images in a venue that has mm -hmm. two light bulbs and a strobe, like there's got to be some realism there. Yes. Um, but I always have tried my best to deliver like the best quality that I can with whatever circumstance. And when I do get feedback, like I've, I've someone I work really well with, with uh, revision and feedback is Tyler uh, from Born Anew, Sax. Shout, Shout out. out. Gotta have him on here sometime. Sax, if you're <laughs> listening, I'm coming for you, boy. I'm interested in having you on here. Um, um, but yeah, I've worked with him on a lot of like promos mainly. And even when we were, they, I did a full length tour with them. <laughs> one of my, well, my first full length tour. And they, the entire time, like we had great communication. He was like, I like what you're doing. It was mainly like, can I have it blue? But, <laughs> but no, we worked really, really well together and having that dynamic, um, even, Meredith from Victims, like her and I will sit there and she'll be like, okay, so this is what I'm going to do for this part. This is what I need you here for. And then after that, like freestyle, do what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and eat, she'll tell me like, hey, yeah, like, you know, I needed you here at that spot. And I'll be like, okay. Like, it's not like she's saying it like you weren't here. It's yeah. more like make sure that you're catching that high energy, you know? To some degree, that's your boss. Yeah, right? like, to some yeah, degree, exactly. We're an employee of the band on some level, yeah. And if they have an idea and they know, like, something that's going to look sick, and it's never not looked sick yeah. when you take their advice. Um, yep. I say that all the time, that, like, I think bands are far more knowledgeable in photos than they realize, and band members always come to me that it's like, I want to get into photography. Like, what should I know? And mm -hmm. my answer is always, like, you you have to learn. You're right. Like these cameras have to learn. But like I think band people are generally like way ahead of someone started from scratch because they've had so many photos taken of them that they're so familiar with what yeah. people would like because of what yeah because of their own opinions and they've received so many that it's so much easier for them to then see a photo in real time and be like oh this is what the frame should be uh, and yeah I think you're right that it's like they're the experts in their art like I can't tell half hearted what they should look like. Yeah. Like, like, right, they've been working on this song for six months. So when they come to me and say, here's like an idea, it'd be crazy for me to be like, nah, what about, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's like, you're the experts here. Like what, where I can succeed the most is in ingesting what they have and then going, okay, I like this baseline. What it needs a little bit of this, or it's lacking a little bit here. And I think that's where I can succeed the most. But yeah, it's a strange thing when it, going back to that earlier conversation of like, when someone sends a music video and it's like, that's the final one. Fuck you if you want revisions. And it's like, no, like you don't, you're missing the point entirely. <laughs> yeah. uh, if nothing else, it's about like, it's a people industry, right? Like no one's going to hire you again if you're hard to work with. And I'm, not that you want to be walked over, you don't want to be pushed over. Like you don't want to be, you don't want to be uh, a full servant of their needs. Yeah. But also it's like, be easy to work with, be flexible. And when someone says, hey, can you do this? Just say yes and make it happen. And like, there's a time and a place to say no, but like, I feel like 95% of the time the answer is yes, whether yeah. I agree or not. And I'll figure out whether I agree or not later, but like, I'm going to do everything in my power to be accommodating and I'll figure out how I can exist inside of that world from there. And it's not my job to, yeah, overhaul what you're doing or in the context of born anew in the blue. It's like, yeah, we've seen that their new album rollout is blue. So my assumptions at the time, it's in somewhere in the back of Tyler's head going like, this is the next step. I don't want to be putting out red images because I know that's not where we're going. And we don't know that. You might not know that. Like the public, no one yeah. really knows that, but they know that. And to ignore that and to try and strong arm that is like, yeah, maybe the photo would look better if it was warmer. But like warm isn't 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 part of the plan right now. It's not part of the roadmap. Yeah, you just have to it, like being easy to work with and having a good attitude are two of the main yep. things that I've realized that bands want from people in their crew. Like 100%. if you're in a bad mood and you're not flexible and you're just, yep. why are you here? Yep. If they, <laughs> uh, I think the other piece of that is like, if a band talks to you and they feel like all you're seeing is green, right? <laughs> you didn't hear that in your, you don't have headphones, but I heard that. And that was loud. <laughs> My bad. Someone's driving on the highway right now. It's like, <gasps> <laughs> Their car just exploded or something. They think your car is fine, fam. We're good. Life's good. Um, where was I going with that? Um, green. 
green. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the other common complaint that I hear from bands is like they talk to people like us and all they hear is that we're seeing an opportunity to make money off of them. And it's like, for sure, we do need to make a living. Like our gear isn't free. Our time isn't free. Like we do need to make money off of you. But if I was trying to get rich, I would have not picked metal. Like right. <laughs> there's yeah. so many other things I would have picked in life besides this, if it was about getting rich. And I think there are plenty of bands who can see through that sometimes where some, where a creator comes to them and it's like, I have this. And the band is like, I think you just want X amount of dollars from us. Like, I don't think there's like a genuine thing. You know, that comes back yeah. to the, the people thing of like, I want you to pay me, but I want you to know that like you're the pay me is like part two, like part one. It's like, I just want to make this thing. And I need to get paid as a result of that because otherwise, yeah, who's going to pay for my rent? <laughs> but there's a, a balance there that always has to be found. Yeah. And it, it's, I feel like it's really important to like a lot of people ask me all the time, like, how do you tour? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, the most important thing is to meet the people that you want to tour with because mm -hmm. I feel like that's what's landed me all of my opportunities yes. is just knowing the people beforehand um, and proving that you're a good time to be around with and like you can get your job done. And yep. that's, that's key because n not to say that nobody takes people they don't personally know out on tour, yeah. but if it's already established that you guys get along and you work well together, mm -hmm. it's going to make it 10 times easier. Yes. Yeah. Having good art isn't the most, I mean, it's like a band, right? Like a band, having a good record isn't enough to get on tour, right? It's about right. having a good rollout with it. It's about having the right image. Like there's so many other pieces. And for us, it's like, yeah, it's not about having good enough photo to get on tour. And I think a band would rather have like a seven out of 10 photographer who's a good hang rather than a 10 out of 10 who's a nightmare to be around. Yeah. And I don't think you can get to a 10 out of 10 if you're a nightmare. I think there's some like, like weeding out process that happens and like, and I feel like all the people, uh, I think of like Eric Easterday is someone I'm thinking of who's like, he's a, the nicest person. Like I've had such great interactions with him and I don't really know him that well. And I've worked under him on a couple mm -hmm. little projects, but like by the time you get to that level, like you meet so many nice people at that level because all the other shitty people got weeded out on the way to that level. So yeah. now when, I think he's talking about like Gojira and it's like, yeah. I'm sure whoever is out there with Gojira is a good, like I'm sure whoever the guitar tech is, is a nice person. I don't know anything about them. I literally zero. I couldn't tell you, <laughs> but like my guess would be that all the dickhead guitar techs got weeded out along the way. And the person who has lasted long enough to make it to the Gojira level is a good person. Uh, and I think that's always like a valuable reminder for me. Uh, a mortal reminder for me, <laughs> um, a valuable reminder for me of like, yeah, being, being kind is so much more important than having good art. And like, if I am, if I am rude, that will last forever. If I take a bad photo, that'll last a week. And like the kindness will last me so much further than any other part of this job. Um, hell yeah. One of my notes here, uh, was that like dream shoots, dream jobs. So I know that you shoot, like, obviously we've talked about a lot of the band stuff. There's also all the landscape stuff that you're doing and all the, the Astro stuff that I think is interesting. Uh, I guess maybe the best way to do this would be in two parts, but in the, we'll do band part second. My first thing is like in the context of landscapes in the context of the world, like, is there a place in the world that you would like have to go shoot? Is there somewhere in your, like your bucket list of like, I need to go see this location physical. I need to go see these stars somewhere, uh, a certain constellation um, that you're chasing. I would probably go to Nova Scotia to Nova see the Scotia. Northern lights. That's Canada, correct? Yeah. Not dumb. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, I heard, I've just heard that it's really beautiful there and yep. it like looks like a wonderland. I mean, I'm already cold just like picturing <laughs> it, but. You're anemic <laughs> ass already. <laughs> so I feel like I don't feel cold when I'm taking pictures at night though. Mm -hmm. I, for whatever reason, like I've always got my best pictures in the middle of winter. Um, and I've stood in snow up to my like thigh level and just. My mom was like, Raquel, <laughs> like, <laughs> but it was sick. I don't know. I just lay my camera in the snow. Absolutely. Uh, two parts of that one, uh, in one of my video softwares, like I've got this like plug in to like insert different skies. And one of them is in Northern Lights. It says in the back, it's like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but at some point in my life, I'm going to do a video with the Northern Lights and it probably won't be a real one. I'll probably have to use the fake ones, um, but I'm with you. The Northern Lights are like a captivating, yeah, there's something about that, that yeah. I, was, I was suspecting you were going to say that, but I wanted to hear it out of your mouth. Uh, I think the other piece there is like you mentioned that, yeah, when you are that cold, that the camera keeps you warm. And I found a strange thing of like when I'm at a uh, I'm an anxious person. Right. And I think uh, shows used to be a really stressful place for me. Of just like there's just so much going on that I'm not comfortable with. And I think especially when I entered this world, like it wasn't a normal place for me. 
And the camera is something that like is like a, a blanket. Like I remember like being five years old and carrying my blankie around and like carrying it way too late into life. Like I yeah, I was like <laughs> five. I don't know if I was quite five, but I'll have to ask my mom. But like I was definitely too old. Like it was it was a problem. Uh, it was one of those things I'd like throw out and like not tell me about kind of thing, and then be like, oh, I don't know where it went. Uh, but like my camera has become my blankie in some sense of like it is a is a comfort blanket. I think that's kind of what you're saying in the snow. It's like it's not a an anxious comfort, but it is like a distraction. You invest yourself in that and then the cold, the discomfort, whatever the, the badness is, doesn't follow you and you're immersed in this thing. I'm just literally shook because I just am thinking about the first time I ever saw you. Okay. At a show and you didn't seem like anxious. You were just walking around with your camera with icy stars and I was just like, I would love to know who this is. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is so funny. That's a great story I don't know if I'm told on here. Uh, I'm very glad you brought that up because in that time I know exactly the day and I was shitting bricks that day. I don't know why. Uh, I was like, I was like mad at you. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> you got mad at me before you met me and just kept that energy this whole time. It's so fucked up. No, we're talking like 2016, 2017. It's the Light in the Cave tour for Icy Stars. Uh, and the reason I'm walking around with them is because I shot them the night before in Hartford. So they played like, yeah, Friday in Hartford and Saturday in Worcester or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and so after the Hartford show, I like lingered around as you do uh, and tried to network. And I got in touch with one of their one of their members. I'm forgetting which member it was. It wasn't, wasn't Devin. Um, it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the other ones. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, at the time, I'm very new to photos. I'm a couple months in tops. I don't know, six months in or less that I've had a camera and been doing this. Uh, and so in my process of networking, it's like, to your point, it's about making opportunities, right? Like you can't always wait for people to ask you to some degree. You have to volunteer for shit and make it happen. So in this moment, I'm like, do you guys need promos? Like, can we just like take a quick band promo? And the guy says no in Hartford, but then when I see him in Worcester, I'm like, any chance? And they're like, fuck it. Let's do it. This is a cool place. Uh, so when you see me is when we're walking back to like the, I guess Backstage. the upper deck of the Palladium. Yeah. yeah. And in that moment, I'm realizing like, I have this, I have no experience. Like I'm so, <laughs> I'm so over my head of like, I've worked to like, I've worked with two bands in my life and taken like one promo before. And now I'm walking with a band I actually like to go like <laughs> try and do this thing. And that promo came out so bad, like just atrocious. And I remember like in the moment knowing it was bad and like being embarrassed and just not knowing how to handle it because the we we're in like this thing. There's no light. So it's dark as hell. And of course, I have a shitty camera and I know that like they're in like rows of people. So I know I need to close my aperture, but then it gets dark. So then you crank up the ISO and it gets noisy. And it was one of those like I remember sitting there and realizing like, oh, I just don't have the gear. Like I literally can't take this photo. Like I need more light. I need something. And in now what i would do is go find someone to be like hey can you hold the phone here like find some way to generate light at the time i don't want to seem like i don't know what i'm doing so it's like let me just do yep. this and pretend it's going well knowing full well that it's not and i remember like taking the promos of them and they're like oh can we see one and i was like oh i gotta go change my battery it just died <laughs> like literally <laughs> never showed them it because i knew like fuck like everyone's out of focus <laughs> like i ended up opening my aperture all the way so you end up with like one guy in focus and everything out of focus and it's still noisy and just bad and like it was a nightmare. So it's it's funny to me that you saw that and were like, wow. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, the duality there is incredible. I was livid because I had, that specific day, I had driven like an extra hour to go pick up my 6D. Because <laughs> yep. I had just got it. And I was like, yeah, like, this is going to be it. <laughs> but I did kind of like, I'm not going to lie, I felt a little cool because they did post your promo. No, they didn't. They didn't? I are am, you sure? No, I'm not sure, but I'm almost positive. That I could have sworn they posted your promo and then they posted like three of my pictures. I'm <laughs> sure. I, I would be so shocked if they posted. I I have posted <laughs> it on my own stuff. It's in like some YouTube videos I made, and I probably could dig it out. I think I did a solo episode, like episode 30, maybe, and I think it's in there because it's like really a good story to tell. Of uh, yeah, me fucking up back in the day, but if. I can try and dig it up, and I'll put the put the famous promo in here of me. You should like edit it stars. now. It's, uh, I guess maybe I could. I do have. I keep all my raw photos. That's you the can, one thing that actually might be from. There's like six months of my photo life that doesn't exist, and a hard drive that got corrupted, and everything else I still have. And that might be from those couple months that I don't have because they're early months. I remember being like annoyed of like, yeah, who cares about the second six months? It's the first six months that you want to keep. Um, I should edit. That's not a bad idea. I think. I don't think I could do much more with it than I did. I think it's you kind of You could run it through denoise. There's 
progress to be made, but I, and it's just composed badly, right? Like it, it's, it's one of those times where it's like, I'm, I guess I'm blaming the gear in hindsight. And the, I guess now it'd be like, no, I could have found a way to do it with that gear. Like I, there's always a way. Shout out Jack. <laughs> you can hear him screaming. Um, hell yeah. Do you have a dream band shoot? Uh, is there like a, a venue that seems incredible to you? Is there a, a band specifically? Is there a, a place? Is there, do you want to go to Brazil and shoot an arena? Like what stands out to you as like the, the North star goal there? I have, okay, so I don't really have, like, a particular band that I'm, like, I wish I could shoot them. Mm -hmm. My dream situation would be bands with members that currently aren't around. Like, I would love to have got Suicide Silence with mm -hmm. Mitch. Like, that would have been insane. But, I mean, I'm I'm doing with Sugar tonight, so I'm really not, like, that's... My, one of my favorite bands, and they're Hell playing yeah. an incredible venue. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be some of my best images to end the year with, hopefully. <laughs> oh, knock on That's loud as fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're good. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. Have you shot my sugar before? Yes. Okay. I shot some them familiarity. a couple years ago, um, and everybody was like, don't do it. Like, oh, it's just strobes. It's mm -hmm. like an EDM show. I remember this conversation. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I was like, do you listen to them? Because you can time it. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, you you shoot in bursts. So, like, one of them will be one of the strobes on. Like, most <laughs> exactly. of them might not be. But, like, you're fucking up. You can't figure out how to make that happen. I feel I feel like they have great production. Like, yeah. even if it's not incredibly lit anyways, it's there's still enough light. Uh, speaking of great production, do you have any interest in shooting like the huge like EDM shows? I, I don't know if I do, but I I was talking with an EDM or some, yeah, someone who's a big fan of the world, and I was thinking about those like I don't know the names of the festivals. I think Lost Lands is one of the ones that like come to Electric mind. Electric Forest, like, and yeah, stuff. like those huge like like ten tier tall building shits and like wide as fuck. No, I do not like festivals. Yeah, I go to So What every year. Uh, victims plays it i've gone on my own accord before mm -hmm. i always go and then i'm like oh i remember why i hate the heat yep and i want to die <laughs> the entire time but um i just i don't like festivals i don't really care for like like the venue i'm doing with sugar at today it's huge mm -hmm. huge brand new venue um and it's like <sighs> I don't like these huge venues because then I feel crazy. I don't know why. I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to be in the in the photo pit with the camera lens like this ever. Yeah. Like I never want to be that person. I never want to shoot Drake from a mile away. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just, I like, it just has never appealed to me. Like, do you remember that one year that Bring Me the Horizon and A Day to Remember maybe played that Songus Arena in Lowell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, Everyone this was is sick, hell. but like, and I rented gear and I still felt like, what is this doing for me? Yep. Bring me <laughs> one of the few bands that I haven't shot that I would like to. I think I finally saw them at Warped and like, I've, yeah, I've seen them a couple of times, but I don't think I've ever actually shot them. Uh, and that's Same. one of the few on my list of like, I'd like to add that. Uh, the one that sticks out of my brain is like a, a wish list thing is I like to make it to Europe and do like Rock AM Ring, like those huge, I think it's German festivals. Okay. Like those enormous outdoor ones that like feel like impossible in the States. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Like yes, those, yes. I feel like I've always like grew up watching those tour videos and uh, I don't know. It's hard to imagine me ending up there, <laughs> but you never know what could happen. Uh, but somehow those seem like the mecca of like being there seems like it'd be so surreal of like, yeah, I've only seen this place on YouTube. And I never thought it would be possible. And I think not that, I don't know. I've seen like chain reaction a bunch of times in California. Like uh, it doesn't seem impossible to end up there. It seems cool. It'd be a nice like feather in the cap to get to go see the place that everyone loves. But like, there's not a part of me that's like, oh, I really got to make that happen. And when I think about like the rock game ring, it's like, how do I end up in Germany? I think it's Germany out of Belgium. I don't know exactly where it is, but like, there's got to be some some way to get me out we, there. We dude. could figure it out. We could, and I think I probably would. I was having a conversation the other day that I think, like, I don't see a lot of my future on tour. I think I've really enjoyed, like, being here and being home and, like, building a network here and, like, building a thing here. And, of course, I'm saying that in the contrast of 30 seconds ago being like, got to go to Germany. I got to <laughs> go. I, why do I keep getting stuck on Germany? I don't even know if it's in Germany. I'm just hoping it is. And if it's not, my bad. I'm an idiot. Tell me in the comments. <laughs> Um, hell yeah. Um, last little note here. Um, a couple little things. We are just about at our hour, which is incredible. This has flown by, so there's like 10 things left to talk about here. I'm going to pick one that seems the most interesting to me. Okay. Um, 
I'm trying to decide which one that is, though. So I'm kind of just filling time as my brain processes. Rapid fire. Let's <laughs> which go. One. Um, does photographing other things help you? So uh, I think the landscape you do is a really interesting piece. And I think it's like a unique piece of you of like it's something you do really well and something that I don't see a lot of other people doing. And you're right. You do go hike in the snow. I know you have like your favorite spots around your area that you are very like secretive over of like these are the spots. And I've always yeah, felt gatekeep. like gatekeep. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt very honored when you like uh, allow me the privilege of being there and you're like fucking telling me to turn off my phone and geotag so I can't like mark it on the map. <laughs> you're like checking my Google Maps when we leave. Not true. She hasn't done that. Um, uh, but I do think that like uh, shooting those things like helps you come when you come back to bands. And it's a weird thing that I can't quite articulate. And for me, it's like I've done like weddings in the past and like I don't know how a wedding makes me better at a concert, but somehow it does. And I've never quite mm -hmm. figured that out. Do you have the same sense that like shooting Astro makes you better in concerts? And I guess like, why? Why does that make you better? Um, I don't think it necessarily makes me better. Okay. <laughs> um, why are they different? I, like I just, so shooting Astro is something that you have to, like I don't use a tripod. Mm -hmm. So that's you, absurd. I know. <laughs> it's like the dumbest thing anyone's ever said about shooting Astro, but whatever, continue. So either I'm standing incredibly still or I'm like in a really like dumb position with yeah. my camera somewhere it realistically shouldn't be, uh, like yeah. on top of a van. Or sitting in your driver's <laughs> seat holding it out the sunroof is yeah. your other favorite. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um <laughs> And I just feel like the way that it's edited, uh, it's kind of similar to concerts where it's like if you're shooting with high aperture, no, low aperture and high ISO, you're going to have to like way dim down the lights and desaturate and dehaze and do all this extra stuff that you wouldn't do to like, I don't know, it's a certain style of shooting. Like I would compare it to shooting a concert with all strobes. Um, okay. Like there's a certain way that you have to do it where you can see the stars and you can see the Milky Way, but it doesn't look crazy noisy. And like, mm -hmm. I don't really know how to explain it. I, I can't really put too much more relation into concert photography with that. But I do like to use my landscapes in photos. Like I'll take a picture of the clouds and then like layer it with band photos or something. So mm -hmm. it comes in play. Just the way to see the world. Yeah, I think weddings is my example. I've also like, uh, does helping, does different genres help you explore? Like for me, uh, there's a country music that I did uh, that always sticks out to my brain. It's like a, just a really unique challenge for me of like, I, I have spent so much time making cameras shake and making things look dark. And then suddenly I get hit by a country artist and it's like, okay, no shake. We're going to be bright. We're going to be pretty. It's going to be like, mm -hmm. kind of like, I don't know, traditional, I guess, in that sense. Uh, I assume you've like you shot metal bands, but you've shot plenty of other non-metal bands. Like, do those help when you come back into the metal world, or is it like just feel like a separate skill set altogether? So I'll say I feel like rap is a different kind of demon slash beast. Like, I've seen me and you have seen almost the same rap shows. Uh, let's put into comparison the the um, Ramirez show, the mm -hmm. lighting for that. Were you made best friends with that girl? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> that one? Yes. Um, <laughs> so that show had great lighting, right? Yeah. But then look into that show. I'm not going to say the, the headliner artist. Okay. But the, the one of the openers, her name was her. And the lighting was completely red the entire set. And then I also... It's so funny. I thought you were like not saying the name because you were scared that you should come out. You're like, oh. I didn't want to say the headliner's name. Oh, yeah, good. yeah. Um, and then <laughs> like the Post Malone show, 21 Savage, the lighting was completely red. Like every... I forgot you did that. That's a huge show. I was the only one that freelanced it. And I'm not going to lie. Damn. I was like... Good for you. I felt like the top dog... I don't know. I will always say shoot your shot. Mm -hmm. I had no business being there freelancing. None. Like I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had no business. And it was like, for me, it was kind of like a moment uh, in my photography career where I did feel a lot of opposition from other mm -hmm. photographers, like a lot of heat. Um, and the it, ops were out in full force. Kind of. Yeah. Like I, I, 
to this day, it's still, I, I re, I'm not going to ever give it energy or breathe life into it, but it was weird. Mm -hmm. And going into a room and being like, you know, like, I'm not going to quit this and I'm going to like, essentially like put my dick out on the table and be like yeah bitch like <laughs> i freelanced episode 50 <laughs> mission accomplished <laughs> raquel tavares rtp photography thank you for coming through that feels like a great place to wrap up because i don't want to reply to that uh or not at least into a microphone um mission accomplished, episode 50 so tell you back, so we made it happen. Uh, is there anything coming up in a couple of months? I guess my two questions here is one, where do people find you on social media? Uh, and number two is, uh, what do you have coming up that you want people to know about? Um, my social is Raquel Tavares Photography with the at in front of it. For what did it used to be before that? <laughs> R RTP underscore photography interesting so it was like raquel tavares photography underscore photography and i didn't realize that and then peter was like hey he and then okay no you convinced me to change it and then you told me like oh if you change it all your tags will still be there and you told me that and then i, I changed okay. my handle to what it is now and some dude took my handle and it's like Pictures that I took of like August Burns Red on their Instagram, you go to it and it's just like some random dude. That's so sick. <laughs> I need to find these. I'm gonna look at RTP photography the second we hang up. Everyone here, go follow RTP photography first. <laughs> <laughs> and then follow Raquel Tavares photography after. But RTP photography, I'm gonna have to explore this homie. That sounds like my new best friend. Um, I'm gonna send him the picture of you from middle school. <laughs> We need to cut these mics before I get myself into too much trouble here. Um, yeah, follow her on Instagram. Uh, Twitter is Plant Photo Mommy. Is that the best way to send people on Twitter? Yeah. Her ex, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, Facebook, don't use it. Just yeah, find something better it. to do with your time than use yeah, Facebook. No. Um, I assume you're available for tours. Anything you want to put out in the universe? I know we kind of started the show with it, but yeah, just to remind I folks. I am booking tours into 2024. Hell yeah. And if people are interested in booking you for tours, they should reach out to you via Instagram. Is that the best bet here? Or email. 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 It's my first son last name at gmail.com, but I'm going to post like an ad at the end of the year. So perfect. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. That'll all be on Instagram. Um, yeah. For me, uh, I guess follow me on socials. The bigger things here is like the episode. Tell Raquel that you enjoyed her. Uh, I think it's nice when you reach out to the guests and tell people you would like them so they come back, hopefully. Help me keep getting people on the show by telling them that you liked it, that you listened to them. Uh, if you made it this far, I would like to try. This probably won't work. But I've been trying to figure out, like, I've been telling people, like, comment. And it's like, that's a dumb thing. So okay. my thing, if the show is about learning something from everyone, mm -hmm. I, like, I, I, I say that I have joking all the time. But, like, I do mean it genuinely. Of, like, I, I feel like I have these conversations selfishly. Of, like, I want to chat with you and I want to learn from people. Like, I, yeah. I think the best way to make myself better is, like, there's so many people doing what I do. And I think for so long I was on an island. Or I felt like I was on an island doing it. And this has been my effort of, like, I'm not on an island, and not only am I not on an island, but everyone I talk to has so much in common with me, more so than I even realized. Um, so, with that being said, we're learning something from everyone here. So, comment something you fucking learned from Raquel. Make her feel smart, make her feel awesome, make her feel cool. Let me know what she taught you today, and I hope it's something something pretty wild. Hope it's like not to creep around on stage. We're trying to think about like what the worst thing someone could have learned from this is. Uh, and we'll find out soon enough, hopefully. Um, anyway. Episode 50 in the bag, halfway through. I appreciate you coming through to celebrate my little milestone here. Yes. Mission accomplished. Okay. <laughs>